In this video, I'm going to show you how to work with CSV files. And working with CSV files is important because sooner or later you're going to be getting data to work with and it's going to be stored in a file that you get from someone. Chances are that file will be a CSV. But even if it isn't a CSV, the methods we're going to see here are going to translate very easily into other file forms that you commonly see. So with that, we'll jump right into our notebook. The first step is going to be setting up our environment, and I need to import the CSV module to do that. And I'm also going to import matplotlib pyplot so we can graph some of the outputs that we get from our file. To run this cell, I'm going to hit shift enter. And once the environment is set up, the next important thing we need to get done is find the path to the file we want to work with. Now the file I'm going to work with is stored in the same directory as this notebook so all I need is the file name. But the convention usually is that you will set a variable as a file reference when the path is longer than just the file name. I'm going to start with the context manager. I set the context manager, then I'm going to set a file handle to open the file and input the file name. I set a reference to the file and I just call it file. And I'm going to copy and paste some code here. So we're going to set another variable to reader to actually read the file handle. We're going to skip over the first row and store that as a variable called header. And then we make a list called data. Once I do all that, I'm going to loop through that list. And for each row in the reader handle, I'm going to append uh, that row to my data. Once I'm done with all that, I need to make sure I close the file. So that's run. Now I have a variable called data. And if we want to see the first few rows, I'll slice them off. So there's the data that we're reading. And we're getting monthly price data for, in this case, the S&P 500 going back to 1950. So a pretty big data set. An alternative to this longer loop form is the more compact list comprehension format. And in this form, uh, we accomplish reading the file with just one line of code. Just to show that we get the same thing, I set a new variable and I'll slice off the first three rows of that. And so you can see comparatively, the list comprehension is a lot more compact and sometimes preferable. Now to work with this data, it's not that easy in the present format. So a lot of times what people will do will be to convert it to a NumPy array for easier work. I'm going to go ahead and import NumPy and then I'll set a variable to store the data in. And we'll see what the first few rows of that looks like. Okay, so already we can see that it looks like it's a little bit easier to read. All right, the only problem we have here is that we have a bunch of price points. We don't really know what each one of these price points refers to. Fortunately, we set a variable called header to store the column headings in. So we have yet another list and it shows the column headings. And if I want to say get the closing price, since Python objects are zero index, the first column is zero and moving across, open is one, two, three, close is four. So if I want to look at closing data, I'm going to reference column four in this NumPy array. So we'll go ahead and graph that just to get an idea of what this data looks like. So I'll reference the pi plot. I will convert the data into NP float data type. Then I will reference the mpy array and get the whole column worth of the fourth column using this notation. We run that cell and there's what our plot looks like. So sometimes this isn't even as convenient as we'd like it to be. So I'm going to show you one more method of working with the CSV and it cuts out a lot of the steps and that's going to be to work with a pandas data frame. So the first thing we need to do is import pandas. We then set a variable data. We set that to be a pandas read CSV function. And then we, again, reference our file name. We'll run that cell. Takes a little bit longer, but let's see why it takes a little bit longer. Now when we look at data, instead of slicing off the first few rows, there's a built-in function called head, and that gives us the first five rows. So now we have a nicely formatted a data set in columns and rows, similar to what you find if you opened up say an Excel spreadsheet. If we want to plot this, I now reference the data frame that the data is stored in, and then I give it a column name instead of a column index number. 
And then I can hang the plot function right off the end of that because pandas has made connections to the PyPlot library. So I hope that helps with getting started with CSV files. Next, we're going to see how to work with time series data.